Hello everyone, the Kentucky Patriot here. Uh, wishing you the very best as we start the new year. Hope you had a great holiday season. And uh, <clears throat> there's a topic that comes up uh, uh, quite often. And uh, it's, 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 it's something I'm gonna try to touch on and then uh, give you my thoughts and opinions. And then uh, Lord willing, we're gonna uh, send it on over to a couple other channels that have a lot of experience and uh, uh, they can share their thoughts and likes and dislikes with you. Uh, but it's all about holsters. Uh, and are you carrying the right holster for you? And uh, <clears throat> this goes right along with, uh, especially if you work at a gun store or you just uh, do a lot of shooting uh, or you're a police officer or, uh, <clears throat> or you're an instructor or whatever, or you're a, uh, a recreational shooter where you go to the range a lot and people know that, that you're a gun guy or whatever, uh, these questions get brought up. And one question that gets brought up really quick is what gun should I carry? And then two, what holster should I get? And a lot of times it's not that somebody's trying to be evasive or mislead you or give you false information. Uh, there's just such a range of what are you gonna use it for? How are you gonna carry it? So what gun is right for you and really what holster is right for you? Uh, it may take some time for you to even find uh, what works best for you. Uh, I think I speak for most of us, if not all of us, uh, that have carried for very long at all you'll find a plethora of, of holsters. Uh, you know, we, a lot of gun guys have got a sock drawer or whatever, there's a drawer with nothing but holsters. And uh, there's all kinds of holsters. You evolve over the years, you change, you, or you only get holsters for certain times of year. Uh, but I've got several different holsters here and I'll talk about a few of them for just a few minutes. And uh, we'll, we'll just dive right into, uh, you know, all about holsters, basically what I wanna make this video about. Uh, but. Uh, first of all, you've got to understand what you want out of your concealed carry or uh, your holster and where you're going to be. Uh, for instance, a little gun like this may be great uh, for pocket carry. You know, a little North American arms that, you know, you may uh, uh, won't be interested in something like that for pocket carry. Um, and if you want to carry it in your pocket, it's always good to even have a holster in that to keep uh, lint out of the barrel or whatever. Uh, but a gun like this isn't going to be a good choice if you're in Alaska in bear country. So the same thing with a holster. Uh, you may talk to a police officer or something that'll tell you great things about the Glock 17 or the Glock 19. Uh, but if you're wanting to carry one of those guns on your ankle or inside the waistband, then those probably aren't going to be good choices for you. So just because somebody's telling you some information, uh, it doesn't still mean that it's going to be right for you. So uh, having said all that and trying not to make this video too long, uh, there's every kind of make, model, holster, um, it depends on whether you want to carry a shoulder holster, uh, inside the waistband, outside the waistband, ankle carry, uh, even in the pocket. There's so many different kinds of holsters uh, and, and different body types. Uh, but, you know, for instance, there's the old school holsters, uh, the Western style uh, leather holster, uh, which are, are really neat, really cool. Everybody likes these. Uh, this was one my grandpa had, and uh, uh, he had several more. I, I've, got, I've got some more too. You know, especially if you go horseback riding or you're just out on the farm. Uh, and if you've never had a, a, a old school revolver uh, and, and get a draw and shoot and go to the range with one of those holsters, uh, it's really a whole lot of fun. It really is. So uh, though they're cool, though they're fun, though they look neat, though they're the wide herp, uh, Old West, Clint Eastwood, John Wayne style holsters, uh, really, to be honest, those holsters aren't going to be real practical for you. Like I said, not saying you can't carry a gun. Uh, like I said, out on the range or farm, if you have a farm or doing fence or something, it can be a lot of fun for you. Uh, but really, they're not going to be as practical as, as some of your other options. Now, here's a, a, a Galco holster that's pretty neat. Uh, it just hooks right on your uh, belt loop. As you can see, you just put it on your belt loop, and then your, uh, your gun just goes right down in here. And that may be a good option. It's quick, it's simple, it's easy. Now, there is no retention on this, or I'm sorry, there is retention, but there is no button release, or it's not like a Serpa, it's just retention that holds it in. And as you can see me pull it out, it holds it pretty snug, it really does. But somebody can still walk up behind you and pull it out, but uh, something like this is an option uh, for a lot of people. And you can adjust these uh, screws to make it uh, fit your gun. Uh, you know, I've had this for years and years. Uh, and I'm not going to go back into my EDC, my everyday carry. Uh, I've mentioned that in several videos and in uh, the recent video about my winter carry, what I do about inside and outside the waistband. Uh, <clears throat> but I will say this real quick. Uh, uh, you don't have to always carry a certain gun 
uh, with you all the time. Like for instance, we talked about in the winter carry video, summer carry, there may be times when uh, you can go outside or inside the waistband and you wanna uh, carry different guns in different positions and that's okay too because sometimes you may not carry the gun you shoot best with uh, in the summertime. You may not be able to carry that gun with you. You may have to have another option. You know, uh, <clears throat> like, like we've talked about when we go to the beach or something for on vacation, I may not be able to carry my outside the waistband uh, so far I land 40 caliber with me. I may have to have something a little more deep concealment or maybe even a pocket pistol. Uh, so all these things are up to you. Uh, and, and really, I know a lot of people laugh at these, these Uncle Mike's holsters, and, uh, and, and they say, oh, these are cheap holsters. Uh, but I've told you, now this isn't my EDC, uh, but these holsters, I believe, uh, really can serve you quite well. For instance, I use these. They're cheap. They're, and they do have this strap to help hold the gun in case you fall or something. Uh, but, you know, a paddle holster like this is comfortable for everyday carry. But if you're going to be hiking or up a steep hill or fishing or out in the woods or you're going to be doing a lot of movement, uh, <clears throat> these right here, ones like this, or especially this one, uh, I carry this a lot when I go fishing, when I go hiking, and when I'm out in the woods. Or, or whatever, and it's cheap, it's easy, it's comfortable, and I kid you not, know, I'd put something like a Smith & Wesson shield in here, carry this outside the waistband, you can put a shirt over it if you want to, if you're out in the woods, nobody's gonna care, but if you got this outside the waistband, I'm serious, you'll never know this is on your side, so you're still armed uh, with a real soft holster, and, and it's really comfortable. Like again, I'm not a big fan of these for EDC, you know, when you're in um, town or a concealed carry, but out in the woods, these can serve you uh, really well, they really can. And there's all kinds of different ones like this one just inside the waistband kydex holster uh, <clears throat> but i want to talk about a lot of times too people ask you to recommend a certain brand and <clears throat> sometimes they'll think maybe you misled them when that's not the case so if you see somebody that says something about their channel because everybody's different they can give you their advice and opinions of what works good for them may not work good for you or their experience they have may differ from the experience you have and uh, I'm going to talk about the same comfort company here, and I'm not here to uh, uh, discredit or praise anybody. I'm just telling you the experiences that I have. I'm not here to hurt a company or promote a company. I make nothing off these videos. I'm just telling you my personal experiences and trying to pass them on just to maybe help you, especially if you're in the new to the concealed carry. Because like I said, we get a lot of questions of what gun should I buy, what holster should I buy. So <clears throat> this may help you explain it a little bit. Uh, several years ago, we was at the NRA convention. There's been three or four years ago. I can't remember time gets away from me. And uh, I, as, like I said, you collect holsters whether you mean to or not, you collect holsters. So I was in there just looking at different companies and then they're real good about uh, uh, letting you look at them, hold them, try them on, different things. Well, we come by the Safari Land booth and I really hadn't had any experience with Fox Safari Land. A buddy of mine told me about them. So I went to the Safari Land booth and there was a guy there, of course we understand he's a salesman He's trying to make a living and he's trying to sell you a holster. We understand it, that's just business. Uh, but it wasn't like he was just trying to sell us a holster. He opened boxes, he made sure that, he, he asked me what gun I was carrying, I told him how do you want to carry it, and I was telling him kind of my activity level, what I do today, day, EDC, and uh, he said try this holster on. So and he said try this, do this, do this. And, he, and it wasn't like he was just trying to sell me a holster. He wanted me to be comfortable, he wanted me to enjoy the holster, he wanted a holster that fit me, and he gave me this Safari Land, and I tried it on and loved it, and I bought it, and I've been happy with it ever since. And this is the gun uh, and the holster I carry uh, pretty much every day, and it's got retention, uh, but it's also got a button right here that you have to push when you draw, so somebody can't just walk up behind you and pull the gun out. You have to actually push this, but it's right there where you engage, so it's real easy to access. Uh, this holster, and I'll show you a little bit about it, uh, is, 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 is really comfortable. It sits right here outside the waistband, and a big guy like me can throw a, a shirt over, and, and you can carry it, nobody knows, even if you're carrying a, a larger size uh, gun, it's a 40 caliber Smith & Wesson compact m and uh, I can carry that and, and pretty much nobody knows I've got it, it's very comfortable. Now if I bend a certain way, it may print a little bit, but in general, it's very concealed, very comfortable. I wear this all day, every day, and it's extremely comfortable. I love this holster, couldn't, couldn't tell you enough about how the company treated me, how the salesman treated me, how the holster's been, it's been durable, reliable, and uh, I absolutely love it. The ergonomics, like I said again, uh, this button, as your hand goes in right here anyway, it's real easy to access, pull straight out, and you're ready to roll. So, of all the good things I said about Safari Land, if you would have asked me about Safari Land, I'd have told you basically what I told you, and I'd have praised them for their salesmanship, for their uh, customer service, for how he just, you know, he took time with me to make sure I got the holster. He wasn't trying to sell me a holster and get me out the door. I, I mean, he made sure that I had what I wanted, what was comfortable, what was going to work for me. So after I got my 1911, uh, 
Now, I, I, I've told you in other videos, I never carry a 1911 concealed. As much as I love a 1911, as much as we spend by far more time with 1911 booths than we do any other gun, I love a 1911, it's my favorite gun ever made. As much as I love all guns, the 1911 is, is shootability, liking, talking about it. I am a huge 1911 fan. However, there's never a time when I think, boy, I'd like to carry that today. I just don't. Now, I love going to the range with it, but I do not want to carry that. Do not want to try to conceal that. It's too heavy for me. But I did want a 1911 holster, so when I go to the range, uh, I don't want to carry just, you know, something like this. If I'm going to go shoot or going to be with some friends, I like to have a good solid holster, you know, good, you know, if I'm going to be moving around, keep it retention, keep it locked in place, keep it where I want it, where I can get to it. And uh, so uh, I just called Safari Land. I found their number on the internet on my phone or whatever, computer, whatever, internet, whatever it was. And I called Safari Land and uh, told them basically what holster I had for my and how much I loved it. And then I told them that I wanted uh, one for a 1911, basically the same thing. Uh, well, he told me they didn't make one. And I then tried to maybe, because sometimes uh, I'm a hillbilly and I don't get my words out just right or explain. So I tried to again explain what I had for the 1911. He then, in so many words, let me know that he worked for that company. He knew what they had, and I didn't know what I was talking about. Basically, that I was just <laughs> silly, you know what I mean? So he was very rude, uh, very, uh, uh, you know, it was, his customer service was terrible. And uh, I thought, wow, but had I not had such a wonderful experience with them, I just wouldn't support the company. But where I had such a good experience before, and I love this holster so much, I just went to my local gun store, told him, he said, yeah, I'll order it for you. And I, cause I don't know the makes and model, I'm not, you know, because uh, every company calls all kinds of different holsters by different models and makes. So he ordered me this. And though it's a Safari Land, and though it's made like this, and I know it's a 1911, the holster's not gonna be exactly like the 40 caliber, but smaller gun holster, I understand that. But this is the worst. <laughs> uh, terrible holster that I've ever had. It's made by the same company, made just like that one. Um, but literally, and uh, I'm not you know, telling you you have to do this, but I think the more you train, the better off you're gonna be. So I do it all the time. I go through the house and I'll sit here and train on my draw all the time. I work on my draw, dr uh, drawing from concealment. And the reason being is, uh, I think we get stuck in a flat range mindset. We'll go shoot targets a lot of times and uh, we've got people that's never been ran, never been you know, behind court, never. In a real life scenario, it, you're not just gonna be standing there and somebody else standing there and shooting targets. You need to train uh, uh, more real, realistic. Now, the, the, the flat range is fine. If you get a new pistol and just wanna aim them in the sights or just go to the range and have fun with your friends, that's fine. But really, as concealed carry holders, we need to be able to train. I think it's Pat Mac uh, that says train like you fight and we need to make it realistic. So you need to have some real life training in there and we understand that. Uh, uh, but anyway, uh, uh, back to this holster, uh, uh, it just, it just, I didn't like it at all. But this one, like I said, I go through the house all the time drawing it. And I'll, I'll have my wife or kids or just be walking through the house and they'll give me a command where, you know, like I'm not expecting, like I can draw real fast and we always keep it safe. Don't, don't, don't worry, I'm not pointing at anybody. I'm not shooting in the house, you know, just, so I know there's probably a few range Nazis that says it's gonna be unsafe, but it's not. So you need to train, uh, being able to draw from concealment. And I train all the time and I've had this several years and just now, you might be able to see just some slight wear marks on my gun. I really don't know if you can, uh, but when I get to cleaning, I can notice it. But that's to be expected because I wouldn't even begin to know the thousands of times that I have done this with this gun constantly. Uh, like I said, I won't tell you that I train every day, but I pretty much train every day on the draw because I don't care how good you get at the range. If you get to where well, you're actually, you can put uh, at different distances, the rounds through the same hole every time, or you, know, you, you leave the range and every one of your groups you can cover with a quarter. Uh, that's all well and good, but it's absolutely null and void and useless if you can't get to your gun. So drawing's a part of it too. Uh, and I know part of it's getting used to, uh, but with this holster here, uh, it's not where my finger is naturally. I've got to come up with my thumb in an unnatural position and try to rock it back as I then try to draw. And then if you've got a 1911, you carry it the way most people carry it, the way the military carried it, uh, locked and cocked, then after you try to manipulate this in an awkward position with your thumb, then you've got to come back up and then try to manipulate the safety. And like I said, I never carry that 1911, never planned to carry that 1911, but still, I would try to draw, and it was the most awkward, confusing, un, 
natural movement ever was to flip this back and then come up, get your thumb back on the safety and then, uh, because I can tell you this, if I was going to carry, this is me now, you make your own choice, but if I was going to carry 1911 uh, and if I was going to get a smaller size 1911 or whatever, like the commander or officer model, uh, I would carry it locked and cocked. That's just me. We made all kinds of videos on carrying one in the chamber and that's ultimately up to you. But if I'm carrying 1911, I'm just going to tell you I'm going to carry it locked and cocked. Or carrying it locked and cocked was very hard and unnatural with this. Not saying you couldn't get used to it, but again, trying to finagle this. And this wasn't comfortable. And like I said, I have, I don't, can't tell you the times that I have unholstered and reholstered this gun and this uh, configuration with this holster and basically no wear marks. You can ask my wife, this has some kind of, I don't know if it's supposed to be padding or what, but it's not like this, just the Kydex. It has some kind of, it's not felt, but some kind of like asphalt material. I don't know what it's called. Uh, but you've seen my 1911 and, and, and the videos, and I'm not exaggerating. I bet you I didn't even have this in this holster a dozen times, and I already started to see just a little bit of wear marks, and I thought, you've got to be kidding. So having said all of that, like I said, I'm not promoting a company. I'm not trying to discredit a company. But if somebody says, oh, Safari Land holsters are great, and you have an experience like this, and you recommend it, then somebody has an experience like this. It's not that somebody's trying to lie to you or deceive you. All we can do is give you our experiences. So anything I tell you is my personal experience. It may or may not work as good for you. So you gotta be able to care careful telling somebody that only this gun is gonna work for them. Only this holster is gonna work for them. Only a leather holster is any good, or only a Safari Land's any good, or only Galco's any good, or only uh, Blackhawk's any good. Uh, uh, if you have good uh, uh, success with your holster system, I would love to hear about it in the comments below because uh, like we said, uh, I don't think I'm the minority. I think I'm the majority uh, and, and at least everybody I know that, that has carried any time at all. They've got all kinds of holsters and if, and if you have a lot of holsters, would you please share your experiences? Uh, tell us what you like. Tell us what you don't like. Uh, tell us about the inside of the waistbands. Tell us about the outside of the waistbands and I've heard that too on a certain you know holster company or whatever. Uh, they'll make one, like let's say, inside the waistband style that somebody loves. Well, the outside of the waistband style they don't like. Or a certain ankle holsters or shoulder holsters. Um, I don't have any shoulder holsters, never have. This is just me. My best friend carries an ankle holster every day. And he does fine with it. I've tried different holsters, different styles, different pants, and the way I'm built, it just doesn't work for me. So I, I don't have, I, the ankle holsters I, I've had, I either sold them or gave them away. I don't know what even happened to them. Uh, so I don't even have any of those to show. Uh, but there's just so many holsters, uh, and, and like I said, there's some that people will, will laugh at, but but don't, don't let anybody else pressure you in peer pressure into making you make a choice that you don't want to make. If you want to go out and mow your lawn, like I do, this is what I take with me, a nine millimeter uh, Smith & Wesson shield when I mow my lawn, and I literally don't know it's on my side. Uh, like I said, it's not my everyday carry, but when I'm doing certain tasks, this works great. Uh, you know, uh, this leather holster, it may work good for you. Uh, this Kydex may work good for you. Uh, the, the, the really strain is most of the time, I know you can order it, so you still gotta play shipping, or if you're at a gun store, they won't let you open it till you buy it, so they'll take it back sometimes they won't. It's trying to find the right holster to fit you, and we've all got different shapes and body styles and, and, and weights and heights, so what works good for your buddy may or may not work for, good for you. So what, what, what probably a good thing to do is find somebody that has holsters or has had a lot of guns, and try them on for yourself, because even though somebody may be giving you a good gun advice and good holster advice, if it don't fit you comfortably, then it's not good advice for you. Because as I've said, I think the importance of consistent carry video, if you have a big gun like a 1911 that you shoot really well, that you really love, if you don't carry it every day, then it's not a good choice for you because there's never going to be a time uh, when, when somebody's going to mug you or hurt you or do you bodily harm that you can say, wait a minute, I'm a concealed carry permit holder and I have a gun, but it's at home. Let me go get it. That'll never happen. So I would rather uh, have a gun that I'm going to have with me all the time that's comfortable. That I know I have with me than, than to have one every other day or just when I think I'm going to need it. So having the right holster is very important. Uh, having the right gun in that holster is very important. And I know I, I've talked about this holster and this holster, uh, but really, to be honest with you, if you're everyday carry when your life depends on it, uh, you need to have a gun and a holster that's made for each other. This one size fits all in the holster uh, is probably not going to be a good fit for your gun. 
you need to have a holster made specifically for your gun. And that holster needs to be comfortable and uh, that holster needs to be accessible and you need to be able to get to it quick. Wherever you carry, uh, you need to practice and train with that uh, because who knows, uh, it may uh, depend on your life. It really may. I mean, how quick you can get to your holster. Can you get to the holster? If you're fumbling with it, I'm, I'm telling you, it's not going to wait. It happens quick as we told you about in other videos. The situation happened to us. Uh, you don't have five minutes to prepare. They're on you. You've got to do something and you've got to do something now. So uh, being prepared is a big key. It sure is. So uh, again, we don't want to scare you, make you feel paranoid, uh, but we do want you to train and be ready and be able to defend yourself and your family. And uh, I hope this holster video helps you. Like I said, there's all kinds of other holsters I could have got into and I just briefly uh, went over these, but, uh, and I still, I, I do, I love these. These are great for the range. Uh, my, my, my papa, God bless his heart. He, he passed, he had all kinds of, he, he loved the old west style and old west revolvers, but um, it's probably not going to be practical for you, but I hope this video helps you. Uh, I tried to make it just a kind of a shotgun approach to a real quick uh, uh, experience with, with holsters that I have. So just because somebody recommends you a certain holster or a certain brand or a certain kind, like I said, I, the two best and worst experiences I had in holsters are these two right here made by the same company. The best experience I've ever had and the worst experience I've ever had. So this was terrible from salesman point of view, from fit to finish to, to, consider, to being able to access your gun, and this was just the opposite. So like I said, just because somebody's recommending you a holster or gun doesn't mean they're trying to deceive you or, or telling you wrong. Um, but, but like I said, when somebody asks you what gun should I carry, what holster should I carry, it's not that I'm being invasive, not that I'm trying to give you false information or I don't want to answer the question. It's just... It's just such a broad uh, uh, field, it really is. What are you gonna carry? What caliber are you gonna carry? What size gun are you gonna carry? Where are you gonna carry? All plays into it. So, uh, like I said, in the comments below, if you don't care, tell me the holster you carry. Tell me the holster you like. Tell me some good experiences. Tell me some bad experiences. And we all put our experiences together because uh, I've carried this for years, but I'm always up for uh, uh, new ideas, new uh, new carry methods, I mean, new guns. I, I love the gun community. I love holsters, love accessories. So uh, let me know in the comments what you think. And this is just my quick shotgun approach to holsters. But there's two other guys that I've talked to that I think the absolute world of. And uh, I'm going to uh, tag them. And Lord willing, they're going to make a video about holsters, what they like, what they carry, uh, their experiences, uh, you know, and, and share with you some of their knowledge. And both of these guys are a wealth of knowledge. I look up to both of them, thank the world of both of them, and I appreciate them so much. And if you're watching this, I guarantee you know who both of them are. Uh, but the one is Scott from Kentucky Ballistics. He's actually been to my house. I've been to the range and shot with him. I enjoy shooting. I love shooting, but I'm telling you, he's phenomenal. Uh, him and Buffalo from Buffalo Outdoors, uh, both of those guys are phenomenal shooters and are a wealth of knowledge. Uh, <clears throat> and I've seen that firsthand. I thank the world of Scott. So I, I uh, talked to Scott from Kentucky Ballistics to see if he would make a video and talk about his holsters and, and what he likes and he doesn't like and share some of his knowledge with you. And he will steer you in the right direction. I'm telling you, he's a wonderful guy. Thank, thank, thank the world of him. And the other guy is Paul Harrell. And uh, really, every view pretty much on my channel is, is due to Paul Harrell. Paul Harrell has been a friend to me. He has been so kind to me and my channel. And I, I can't thank him enough for all he's done for me. And it, you know it if you've watched any of Paul Harrell's videos, videos his experience, his wealth of knowledge. Uh, I mean, he's just one of the most well-rounded when it comes to guns and ammo and testing and, and experiences. Uh, if you've not watched his channel, make sure you go check out Paul Harrell and watch him from front to back. And I think probably most of you know this, but he's actually got some older videos where it's not under Paul Harrell. It's under Disaster Contingencies, and that's where I first got uh, in contact with him, and those are great too. So, But anyway, if Paul Harrell and Scott wouldn't care to make a video, and, 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 and these guys aren't just telling you something they've read on the internet. These guys have been out in the field. They've trained. Uh, they know their stuff, okay? you got to watch who you listen to on the internet, but these two guys... Guys, uh, I'm telling you, are top-notch, squared away patriots, Americans, and and I'm just uh, honored and thrilled that they, uh, uh, you know, said they'd make a video about this same topic. So be looking real short in the near future for Scott for Kentucky Ballistics and Paul Harrell on these holster videos. They'll help you. Uh, they'll give you wealth of knowledge. And again, if you'll tell us your feedback, we'll all learn this together. Wish you the very best of the new year. May God bless you again. Thanks, Scott. Thanks, Paul. Appreciate you both. May God bless you. The Kentucky Patriot, signing off.